So the crew engaged in uh, quite a bit of maintenance work today, but uh, the focus, of course, uh, for every day for them throughout the week will be on those scientific investigations uh, happening inside and outside of the station. Uh, the ISS truly uh, a research platform these days. Uh, it's enabling even more investigations every, uh, every year to be flown, new capabilities. Uh, one specifically that's going to be arriving uh, at the station uh, in the next SpaceX Dragon cargo flight, again targeted to take place uh, on September uh, next month, will be called ISS Rapid Scat. This morning, uh, we're lucky we're going to learn a little bit more about it. I'm um, joined now by phone. Uh, the principal investigator, Dr. Ernesto Rodriguez from the Jet Propulsion Laboratory. Dr. Rodriguez, thanks for joining me today. Uh, and if you could start me off, just give me just give me an overview of this device. I mean, it's it's got an interesting name, that's for sure. I mean, what what is a scatterometer? Yeah, a scatterometer is an instrument that measures winds from space. Uh, Typically, you wouldn't think that uh, measuring the winds, which are so ephemeral, would be easy from space. But what we do is we play a trick. We use a radar uh, that sends out microwave uh, energy. And when the wind blows over the water, it makes little waves. And the stronger the winds, the bigger the waves. These waves reflect the radar energy back to the instrument. And by measuring the return power at the instrument, we can actually estimate the wind speed and the direction by measuring from different incidence angles uh, of the wind. And so with this instrument, which covers about uh, 1,800 kilometers at any given time, we can measure the entire Earth uh, from the space station. It will be between 56 degrees uh, north and south uh, within a day. So we'll have a global snapshot of the winds over the Earth every other day. So definitely not... Um, I mean, at least to me, not not a, what the fur, the most intuitive way you would think to to measure wind from space. But I mean, that's, that's an amazing capability, and and this instrument is being flown. It's replacing another instrument that was on a different satellite. So this is this is something that we've been you know trying to work for a while. So what's what's the full story with that? Yeah, NASA has been leading the measurement of winds from space for a long time. And during the, the decade between 2000 to 2009, we had an instrument called QuickScat uh, that measured the winds. And, and in fact, RapidScat is the son of QuickScat in the sense that we've used many of its parts uh, in order to really bring online something very quickly. QuickScat collected data over a decade. It provided an invaluable climate data set, but because of aging over a 10-year mission lifetime, it stops spinning. So one of the ways we build our global vision is to spin the antenna and collect a large swath. So the instrument is still working, but it can no longer spin, and so it can no longer provide a global coverage uh, every other day. So we took the spare parts from QuickScat, assembled them, tested them, and in fairly short order after QuickScat stopped spinning, uh, we were able to uh, put it up in space, and help the International Constellation of Scatterometers, which also right now has a European scatterometer called uh, ASCAT from UMETSAT to give a global picture of the Earth every day. So, I mean, much like the station, this project, also an international effort. Where, where exactly on the station is RapidScat going to go? It is mounted outside the Columbus module, and so actually it's a little bit tricky. We had to turn it because we're using an existing instrument that uh, we couldn't really design for the space station. We built some mechanical attachments to attach to the attach points of the Columbus module and point it down to Earth. So I believe you have an image there of how it's mounted on the Columbus module and also a beam of how it scans has a pencil beam scatterometer that has a conical scan covering the 1,800-kilometer uh, swath. Okay, and just to really bring it home. So what, what are the readings from this instrument going to be used for? I mean, what, what will we learn by flying rapid scat on the station? There are many things that we're going to learn. Uh, this specific mission has three components. The first one is that because of the uh, lack of uh, the ability of QuickScat to collect winds over a big swath, uh, we have a gap in our global monitoring of winds. And so 
very importantly, this instrument will come online and will be able to complement other instruments that are there to give us global coverage every day. And this global coverage every day is used every, by um, operational agencies such as NOAA in the United States or ECMWF in Europe to provide better forecasts of uh, weather and also to do uh, disaster management. For instance, where there are hurricanes approaching land, uh, th these data can be used by weather forecasters to get much better predictions as to what the intensity and the track of the hurricane might be. So an instrument and data that will be affecting a lot of people, uh, especially, in, I mean, just personally us here in Houston. So uh, again, Dr. Ernesto Rodriguez from the Jet Propulsion Laboratory talking to us about Rapid Scat. Thank you so much for joining us today. Good luck with the mission, and uh, can't wait to see it fly. Thank you so much.